What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUp Essentials for iPad. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the auto shape function inside of SketchUp for iPad in order to quickly add things like doors and windows and other things like that. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna use one of the more interesting features contained in SketchUp for iPad, which is the auto shape feature. And you can find that by clicking the little icon on the left-hand side of the screen right here that looks like a little box with a line in it. And so when you do that, notice how you don't get any tools that show up on the screen. You do get this button right here, which gives you a list of what these uh, what these shapes are and what you can do with them. You can click on the button right here to share this to a PDF file. So if you do need to like put this somewhere or um, if you want a copy of the quick reference file, you can do that using this button right here. But basically what auto shape is, is it's a tool that allows you to draw on a surface. So for example, if I draw a circle, it's going to create a circle shape in here. If I draw a rectangle, it's going to recognize that rectangle and draw a rectangle. And notice how the size of the rectangle that you draw is going to dictate the size of the rectangle that's created like this. And so you can also draw a polygon and it's going to create a polygon like this. Now, um, one thing to note about this though is these are two dimensional shapes that it's drawing right here, but there's also other kinds of shapes that you can create. So I'm gonna take all of these, I'm going to select them, and I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just gonna draw a circle around them, and I'm going to delete them. So in addition to being able to draw those flat shapes, you can also add a line to these. So if I draw a rectangle like this, and then a line up, it's gonna create a three dimensional shape. So it's going to recognize that shape, and then it's going to draw something kind of based on the length of the line that you draw in here. I don't think I've quite cracked the code on exactly how it's doing this. Like the longer the line you draw, the bigger the shape it's going to create, but it doesn't seem to actually use the length of the line you create as much as just knowing that it wants to extrude in a direction. And so you can also, if you draw a circle like this one with a circle inside of it, it'll create a torus. And so while the shapes are interesting, I don't know how much people are actually using these shapes right here. I mean, to me, I mean, maybe the torus is a little bit more helpful, but it's pretty easy to come in here and draw a circle and then extrude it up. Like that isn't especially hard to do, so I don't know that I necessarily need auto shape to help me with that. However, where this does get really interesting, at least in my opinion, is in the creation of the more complex shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. And so the complex shapes are really interesting because you can use them to add things that are harder to model. So for example, if I draw a rectangle over here with a little circle on it, it's going to go find me a door model and it's gonna place it in this location like this. And so the cool thing about this is it's going and it's finding a live component um, from the 3D warehouse. So if I come in here and click on the configure live component and I adjust things like the width of the door and the height of the door like this, um, you can use this in order to quickly adjust that door that's in here. And this, I think, is where the real power of these components is um, because you can bring in a lot of different kinds of components. So for example, if I draw a box like this with lines across the outside, it's gonna bring in a picture window. And again, the picture window is fully configurable like this. Now, one thing I will say about this is I don't think that this is actually cutting an opening in the wall. It's just placing this on top of the wall. So this isn't like a wall cutter component or anything like that, at least that I've been able to see. But it's still really powerful being able to bring in shapes like that or um, objects like that really easily. And so I can bring in other kinds of windows as well. So if I draw a window like this, it's going to give me a casement window on the wall. That casement window is going to be something where you can adjust things like the pane type. You can also adjust if it has a swing. The one thing I wish that there was in here is I wish there was a flip window because um, I'm not seeing an option here to flip the window. And so this is turning into the wall. I'm not really 100% sure what to do about that. And so there may be an option in here that I'm missing, but it's not letting me uh, It's not letting me flip that window to face the other direction. I'm not 100% sure why, but there are other options in here as well. So if you want a sliding door, so let's say we wanted to add a sliding door on the wall right here. We can draw a box and then an arrow, and that's gonna go find a sliding door live component and drop it into SketchUp. And again, we 
because these are live components, they're fully adjustable inside your model. So I don't believe you can currently change the units on the live components as well. If somebody knows how to do that, let me know. But still, the ability to just like drop a window into a wall is actually really cool. Um, it's something that I really like and I think I'm going to use a lot. Um, so that's really where the power of auto shape, at least in my opinion, lies. All right, so that's a basic run through of auto shape. I'm finding myself mostly using it for the doors and windows, but that is a really cool function to just be able to draw something on the wall instead of having to go find something in that 3D warehouse. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you have any questions, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.